Hey everybody, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. Big news, my friends, we have a lot of crypto companies hiring. There are hundreds, uh, in fact, thousands, I should say, of jobs that are out there, uh, job openings. They're looking for talent. That could be a great opportunity for some of you listening. In addition, it is very bullish. Put your business thinking cap on. They are anticipating growth, so they're hiring. They're trying to get as much talent as possible. And also on that note, we have Binance, the world's largest crypto exchange. We also have FTX exchange, have just won licenses in Dubai and other countries overseas. So hiring and expansion happening on multiple fronts, my friends. Also, I want to talk about uh, big news regarding uh, folks who have left government positions to go work in crypto companies quite a few actually that I want to share with you today. And we're going to talk about Elizabeth Warren. She's getting called out by both Democrats and Republicans about her anti-crypto stance. So we know she's been a, a buddy buddies with Gary Gensler and they've been trying to stop crypto. So I want to share the details there and much more before we get there. Please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment below and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. If you're listening on a podcast site, please give me a five-star rating. Now, quick word from our sponsor, and that is Taxbit, which is the leading tax service provider in the crypto industry. Taxbit helps you to calculate your crypto gains and losses very easy. I personally use this service. I've been using it for years. I will be using it again to do my taxes, which I actually have to get to my accountant pretty soon. <laughs> the tax deadline is next month, uh, April 15th or 14th, whichever one it is, but I got to get it in early. Um, so this service is really great, guys. I plug in my exchanges. It pulls the data in. It spits out the forms for me. Easy peasy. I hand it to my accountant and I'm done. Years ago, I, I used to do it via Excel and it was a pain in the ass, to be frank. But Taxbit makes it so easy, guys. It's a great service. They're very uh, well known in the market, a lot of investors, and they have um, integrations with the, main, the major crypto exchanges. So if you'd like to learn more, check out the link in the description. Now, let's look at the market here. Bitcoin's seen a little bit of green. It's at $39,660, $660, excuse me, but nothing to call home about. It's just sideways movement, sideways action, guys. And we just got to be patient as we've been talking about. I know I sound like a broken record. We, we've been talking about it almost every day for the past, you know, two, three weeks or a month, I should say. Um, but, you know, this, this is where you could consider this an accumulation phase before the move upwards. Now, this is not financial or investment advice. A black swan event could happen. The war in Ukraine and Russia could uh, you know, expand further and more people jump in into the war, which would be a problem. Um, and that could send markets down. And then the Fed is meeting tomorrow. We know there, there's definitely an interest rate hike coming, probably a quarter point, but we'll have to wait and see, see what happens um, and how the markets react. And we know Bitcoin and the crypto market has been highly correlated to the stock market. So at this point, it's a wait and see, guys. It's pretty boring. It's a wait and see. And hopefully, we don't get negative news that drives the price down. Rather, Bitcoin finds its bottom. It moves up into the retracement to 55 to 58K, um, and then it corrects, and then all coins have their alt season. But as I said, that is not a certainty. It's not a guarantee, but my hope is that plays out. That is certainly a high probability of playing out, but it's not guaranteed. So just want to make sure I say that for people who are new to the market, who think uh, technical analysis and charting and so forth is guaranteed. It's not. <laughs> um, as mentioned, black swan events uh, can change in, you know, any chart, any model and so forth. All right, let's jump into the news, guys. Look at this. Crypto companies with the most job openings. Um, it starts with Binance. They're high, high, low, low. They're, they have over 850 job openings. Crypto.com has over 800, Coinbase over 590, Kraken 307, Bitpanda 301, Consensus over 200, Ripple just over 200, Ledger at 185, La Token, I never heard of La Token, 175, Celsius 136. Wow, guys. Um, what, why do you think they're hiring right now despite the price not have, doing anything and it's on, on a downward trend? Put your business thinking cap on. They're anticipating growth. 
how do you get growth in the crypto market? There has to be positive price action for people to enter the market, right? Think about how you entered in a market and what kept you here. So they're anticipating uh, growth and they're hiring and they're expanding. This is bullish. And remember, um, they are not trying to hire people just to not do anything and, and to lose money, right? They're a business. They have to maintain profitability. So part of growing is hiring, guys. And in addition to that, it's also to expand to other markets. And Binance has won its first crypto licenses in Bahrain and Dubai. Wow. And we know Dubai and the UAE, they've been trying to push for as much crypto-friendly regulations to bring more businesses there. This is very bullish, my friends. In fact, there's also news that uh, FTX Exchange has been granted crypto service provider license in Dubai. Wow, guys, uh, I, this news makes me so bullish. I know some of you are going to say, why isn't the price pumping? Well, positive news is not always a catalyst to pump the price because market cycles have to play out, right? Um, it, just because there's positive news doesn't mean to, it's going to pump. Just because there's negative news doesn't mean the price is going to go down. It just depends on where we are in the market cycle. Right now, Bitcoin's moving sideways. I'll take it I, rather than it continuing to go down. Now, here's some other uh, interesting stuff where people are leaving traditional financial jobs and going to work in crypto in one way or the other. So Taylor Locke, she was a past uh, reporter for CNBC, Make It, um, and Yahoo Finance. She said, today is my first Fortune magazine at, uh, as a crypto reporter. Super excited for this next chapter. So you're just seeing all these legacy media folks, they're now building crypto divisions to cover the crypto asset class. My friends, this was not happening when I got in the market in 2016 and 2017. It was very taboo and it was a lot of negative news. Now it's more um, uh, well-rounded, more detail, more, more, there's much more um, cachet in it, you know, more credibility. Guys, we're just seeing a lot of dominoes fall here on multiple fronts. Here, Michelle uh, Corver, who was, um, here she tweeted, let me read her tweet. After 27 years in government and law enforcement, most recently as the chief digital currency advisor at FinCEN, I'm joining A16Z crypto as head of regulatory. <laughs> wow, guys. She says, it's clear to me that Web3 and its underlying crypto technology can solve critical challenges of the national importance. I've devoted much of my career to helping policymakers understand the power and potential of this technology. I'm now excited to join A16Z Crypto and work directly with Web3 projects to help them thrive in a rapidly developing uh, regulatory environment. A16Z Crypto has or was an early supporter of crypto and Web3, and, I'm, and I've long admired their team and the visionary entrepreneurs they've backed. Guys, this is pretty amazing. Um, uh, once again, dominoes are falling on all fronts, whether it be businesses, individuals, uh, corporates and, and just legacy folks, government officials. Pretty amazing what is taking place. Um, let's move ahead. Uh, Mr. O'Leary, well, I should say Mr. Wonderful, aka Kevin O'Leary, he tweeted out the following today. He said, the future of Bitcoin mining is sustainable, clean energy, period. So there's been a lot of fud about Bitcoin. A lot of people who hate Bitcoin, um, they've been posting negative things. And yesterday, the EU voted not to ban proof of work. I'll say it again for the thousandth time, Bitcoin is here to stay. As of right now, and how it has played out historically, Bitcoin leads the market. There is no party without Bitcoin. The capital, a lot of folks enter the market via Bitcoin. The brand that they know is Bitcoin. A lot of whales hold Bitcoin. A lot of corporates hold Bitcoin. A lot of investment firms hold Bitcoin. And it is here to stay. Whether it holds the number one spot forever, it, you know that's up for debate. Po probably it won't, but it's here to stay as a store of value, as digital gold, and mining is booming in the United States, especially after the China ban. And some folks are spreading misinformation, but I just want to keep it real with you guys. And you all know I'm diversified. Uh, I hold XRP as my number one. Number, number two is Bitcoin. Number three is Ethereum. And then I have Algorand, HBAR, and all the other stuff, right? Cardano and so forth. So 
I look at this as how can I make money and where is the money, where's the capital going into? And a lot of it starts with Bitcoin. And remember, when we talked about alt season, the capital flows from Bitcoin into the alts. So a lot of people will spread misinformation and won't tell you those facts, but that's how the market has played out historically. Now, if it does change in the future, then we will adjust our strategy. But right now, that's how it is. And we know Kevin O'Leary, he's now a big time Bitcoin bull and uh, he's holding Bitcoin and other altcoins. And he's been looking to provide um, what he calls uh, clean Bitcoin uh, or clean mind Bitcoin. So he, he gave the analogy of blood diamonds that, you know, you want to know where those diamonds are, are coming from. Are they in areas of conflict? So likewise, you want to know where's your Bitcoin coming from. One of the things he does is talk to a lot of corporates and the regulatory people. And they're like, hey, we want to hold Bitcoin. We're waiting for regulations, but we also want to make sure it's using clean energy. So he knows what he's doing. I think he's working on something big. So I just want to let you guys know, you know, people who are, who are building and actually investing, you, you, you know, you, you'll get a lot of facts and information from them versus random folks on YouTube or Twitter. And I'm not saying you should just listen to me, go research it yourself, right? Um, I've never said that I'm the end all be all, go research it yourself. I'm just pointing you to the content. That is why I share it on my screen so that you can also verify my sources here. But uh, make no mistake about it, Bitcoin's here to stay and they're gonna adjust the mining uh, and the move to more renewable energy. And that's already in the works. Now, speaking of Bitcoin, the first Bitcoin backed bonds issued by a country could launch this week. Of course, this is talking about El Salvador's volcano bond. Um, so we'll see what happens. This is could, not that it is, but we know they were talking about it, that it would happen sometime this month. So here's the other thing. You know, I, I've talked a lot about it. Narratives are important. Narratives exist in almost every aspect of, of our lives, especially in the mainstream media and, and in markets, stocks, and other assets, as well as crypto. If they're launching this soon, I'm sure they're going to want to want to launch when the price is moving in the right direction, at least, or in the positive, right? versus downward trend. So let's see, the timing of this could be very interesting. And um, this is very bullish news, not just for Bitcoin, but for the entire crypto market, because folks can eventually use altcoins to do these type of bonds. And we see traditional bonds are failing. So uh, all of this is leading us in the right direction with crypto adoption here. Now, I know folks at the IMF don't like this, but hey, there's nothing they can do about it and, and other countries could follow El Salvador's move. Now, let's talk about Elizabeth Warren. Politico put together an article here titled Elizabeth Warren's Anti-Crypto Crusade Splits the Left. The lack of consensus among Democrats means it's unlikely Congress will act anytime soon to pass major legislation on the direction of regulation of the new market. We've got bipartisan support for crypto. There are a lot of uh, Republicans and Democrats on board, and we need more folks to jump in. But when you have someone like Elizabeth Warren, who's anti-crypto and has been pushing a lot of FUD, we know she's very close to Gary Genser, who's been um, ruling and operating and regulating the crypto market by enforcement and coming down with a heavy hand. Um, we've talked about it. He's trying to protect the, the incumbents, the banking cartel. They don't call him Goldman Gary for no reason. So my hope is that the Democrats who are for crypto um, can really come together and fight Elizabeth Warren um, and her nonsense. Um, so Democrat lawmakers are entering a crypto collision course. Questions around how to police digital currency and whether it's to support its adoption are driving a rift not just between the party's liberal and centrist wings, but also among progressives who, see, who often see eye to eye on financial regulation. Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts, who has long led the left's charge to crack down on banks and Wall Street, has emerged as one of the party's most vocal cryptocurrency critics, warning that it exposes consumers to danger, is ripe for financial crimes, and is an environmental threat because of its electricity usage. But a new generation of progressives and a number of other senior Democrats are embracing the startup industry. They're arguing against regulation that could stifle what proponents say is a new avenue for financial inclusion and a breakthrough alternative to traditional banks. 
absolutely correct. This is the new technology. This is this era's internet, right? In the 90s, you had the internet really take off. And obviously that did wonders and, and great things for the US economy and creating jobs and all kinds of great companies and the technology we're using, right? The fact that you can watch this content on YouTube or listening on a podcast. Google came out of the internet and they bought YouTube and look at, you, you guys know the story, right? The same thing is at our doorsteps here with crypto and blockchain. And then you have the clowns like Elizabeth Warren who don't see that. Um, here's my thing. I'm not uh, opposed to proper regulations that stop scams. Obviously, we need to stop scams. I've seen some scams. I've experienced them in my early days, obviously. But scams exist in every market, right? Go back to um, the snake oil salesman, whatever, whatever market it is, there's going to be scammers, but you cannot throw out the baby with the bathwater. You have to make sure you find that balance, foster innovation and while going after the scammers, right? But we know her and Gary Genser, they want to slow this down. This is about the incumbents, my friends, trying to fight back as much as possible because they're getting disrupted. The money is leaving their pockets and they don't like that. And uh, she's going to lose, ultimately lose, while she may slow things down, put up some roadblocks, ultimately she will lose because we see, um, once again, a lot of Democrats are on board now and there's bipartisan support for crypto. And, um, you know, Biden's uh, crypto executive order was certainly a defeat or, you know, something that was not in line with what Warren wants. So, uh, you know, I think we're seeing some movement towards proper regulations. It might be painful. It might be, take a while for us to get the full, you know, details, but at least we're moving in the right direction, even though we're moving in, at snail's pace. Now, Arica Rhodes, who's a Democrat out of California running against um, Brad Sherman. This is a perfect example of someone who's progressive um, and maybe more in centrist versus Brad Sherman, who's trying to protect his incumbents, the payday loan guys, the pawn shops and so forth, right? I interviewed her, by the way, I'll put a link in the description. She said, on the future of crypto and Bitcoin, Representative Richie Torres is right. Our campaign recently shared the same thoughts with Politico. It's advantageous to protect innovation and technology like we did with the internet. So she's citing the same article saying, hey, we have to do the right thing here with this technology. And, and we, this is a global competition. China's trying to make their move. Russia's trying to make their move. And um, she's absolutely right. So we need to get guy, uh, people like Brad Sherman, Elizabeth Warren, and Gary Genser kicked out. Even Janet Yellen needs to be kicked out. So uh, glad to see, though, there's you know fresh blood, new people coming in here who have bright ideas, who understand technology and, and the impact and the future it will have, um, and the impact it will have on the United States and the future of our country. Um, and here, Brian Salston, who um, you know I don't know entirely his background, but he tweeted out today: I declare my candidacy, candidacy for U.S. Senate, making Bitcoin legal tender in the United States will be my primary objective on the Senate floor. He said, Bitcoin is the great reset. So um, let me pull the details here. Uh, um, Dennis Porter, who's been reporting a lot of things uh, related to candidates and politicians on board with crypto. And um, he, he kind of retweeted here saying, um, Bitcoin single issue voters will run for office. Brian will need a lot of help. You can donate here to help pay for ads that will prominently display Bitcoin. So it's great to see, once again, fresh blood, new ideas, people coming in and saying, hey, this is the feature we need to adopt it. And we need uh, proper regulations, not heavy handed draconian laws, which is what Elizabeth Warren wants to do. We need to find a balance just like we did with the internet. And yes, you have to protect consumers. I want to make sure that's clear. I'm not against that. I, I want to stop the scams, but once again, can't throw out the baby with the bathwater. You need to find comprehensive, smart, well-balanced regulations. So that's the news, my friends. And keep tweeting at Elizabeth Warren and calling out her hypocrisy. And um, I've been doing that. <laughs> you know, we have we have freedom of speech, guys. And you know, these social platforms make it easy. Now, now be respectful. You know, don't curse her out or anything like that. Um, but our voices need to be heard and, and we need to amplify the voices of people who are 
understand this technology who are ready to move forward and not move backwards. So let me know what you guys think about this news. Uh, I think um, overall, everything's good. I really, really like this, that, that crypto companies have so many open jobs and are hiring guys. I think this is very bullish. I think uh, they are anticipating a huge growth. So uh, super excited about this. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button and I'll talk to you all later. Thank you.